The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan are one of New York's largest independently owned insurance agencies. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Be firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome. It is January 27th, 2020, and the time is 7 p.m. And you're at a town of Queensbury, a town board meeting, a regular town board meeting. And um, uh, before we begin with the regular agenda items, would you all please join Councilman Harrison Freer in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, into the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. And a little bit unusual tonight is that we have six items for the uh, Queensbury Local Board of Health. And the town board makes itself into the Local Board of Health. So um, I will go through the motions. We're seeing if there is a will on behalf of this board to go into the local board of health. If so, we will deal with those six items. Following that, we have a public hearing, two of them tonight, one on fire protection services agreement with the town and West Glens Falls Volunteer Fire Company. And that's for the years of 2020 to 2022 in a public hearing uh, talking about extending our moratorium on the installation of ground mounted solar energy systems until we finish up our ground mounted uh, uh, law. So we need a little bit more time to do that. And, um, you know, then we'll have the public hearings and then I'll do the uh, we'll do the resolutions. I'll explain the resolutions. I'll give the public an opportunity to speak to any of the resolutions. Now, if there's a town item that doesn't deal with what I just explained to you, I will give you an opportunity at the end of the meeting to speak to this town board about any town topic, okay? So that'll be towards the end though. All right, so let's get back up to the beginning. Do I hear a motion to, uh, Enter Queensbury Local Board of Health. So moved. Moved by Councilperson Perron. Second. Seconded uh, by Councilperson Freer. All those in favor of moving into the Queensbury Local Board of Health signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. We're now into the Queensbury Local Board of Health. All right, we have six mm -hmm. items to deal with. And uh, if Rose would uh, tell the public about our first item. This is a public hearing on a sewage disposal variance application of Kathy Sanders. Okay. So, Kathy Sanders lives, owns a residence, I should say, at 119 Birds Hall Road and is asking for one variance. And that variance is to locate the well or the, yeah, the septic field 85 feet from the well in lieu of the required 100 foot setback. So 
I see that we have an agent for the applicant or the applicant. Uh, agent for the applicant. Agent for the applicant here. So, um, and the and there is a public hearing on this, so uh, we will, um, uh, if you want to elaborate, introduce yourself and elaborate, we'd appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. For the record, my name is Clark Wilkinson, representing the applicant, uh, Kathy Sanders, on this application for septic variants. Um, I am from the Environmental Design Partnership, and we have done the design of the project and stamped the plans. Um, the existing system that Ms. Sanders has is an existing dry well that's inadequate and uh, does not provide proper treatment. And she's also doing an expansion on, on her house, uh, raising the whole house one full floor and adding a bedroom. So therefore she needed to do uh, a new septic design anyway to, in order to get a building permit. Um, but we cannot fit, uh, because of the lot size and configuration, we cannot fit uh, the septic design on this lot without being closer to her well. I will say that the existing dry well is uh, closer to the neighbor's wells than is allowed, and we have moved the system in order to try to uh, get away from being uh, in non-conformance with the adjacent wells. So the only well we, we can't get in conformance with is uh, her existing well for her house. Okay, thank you. Town board members have any questions for Mr. Wilkinson? All right. Uh, this is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public that, that wish to speak to this uh, application? We do have a letter um, from a, uh, a neighbor, Kate and Wally Hirsch, and the letter says, Dear Health Members, we have no issue with Kathy Saunders' request for a sewage disposal variance to install a leaching field 85 feet from the well in lieu of the required 100 foot setback on a property at 119 Birdsall Road. Please grant this request. Okay. And that's all we have uh, as far as correspondence <coughs> on this matter. And again, any member of the public wish to speak to this application? All right, seeing none, I would defer back to the town board. Any Questions or thoughts? Oh, one more thing to add. Uh, the design system is an Elgin type system, which provides better treatment than the standard trench and stone. Um, it's another added benefit to our designs we did as well. Yes, and that's a good point. Thank you. All right. Well, seeing no comments or thoughts on behalf of the town board, uh, is there a motion to approve? Close the public hearing. Yeah, close the public hearing. Thank you. <laughs> I'll introduce. Introduced by uh, Councilperson Metterbeer. I'll second. Seconded by Councilperson Perone. A roll call vote on this, please. Councilperson Freer. Yes. Yeah. Perone. Yes. Switzer's yes. absent. Strau. Yes. And Metterbeer. Yes. Good luck. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next, would you introduce that to the public, Rose, please? This is a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Paul Derby. Okay, Paul Derby uh, <laughs> lives at 31 Canterbury Drive. Uh, we did do a site visit, agent Eric Murdoch uh, is asking for six variances for this property at 31 Canterbury Drive. And those variants are, variances are as follows. One, dispersal system to be 38 feet from the well instead of the required 100 foot setback. Second requested variance, dispersal system be 38 feet from the lake instead of the required 100 foot setback. Third sandage uh, disposal variance being requested is dispersal system to be five feet from the north property line instead of the required 10 foot setback. <clears throat> and the fourth variance, clearance fusion system to be one foot six inches from the foundation instead of the required <coughs> 10 foot setback. And five, the pump station to be one foot six inches from the foundation instead of the required 10 foot setback. 
and six, perk and depot tests performed outside of the required time period. Those are the six variants that are being requested. Um, so, again, if you will introduce yourselves and elaborate a little bit more about your uh, disposal variance request application, we'd appreciate that. Sure. I'm Paul Derby, 31 Canterbury Drive. Eric Murdoch, the design engineer from Onsite Engineering. Okay, and would you like to elaborate? Yeah, just a, just a quick opening statement. I've lived on Glen Lake for 27 years, and in the fall of 2018, my wife and I sold our bigger home and downsized into this smaller um, lot. And we purchased it uh, prior to the septic transfer law. But one of the big things that we want to do is update our septic. So we want to put in the newest, uh, best technology system that we can do. We feel that we're trying to do this here. And for two reasons. One is for the health of Glen Lake, um, which I care deeply about. And the other is to also be a model for others on the lake who are updating to show that you can voluntarily do this and put in systems. Uh, so really those are the two reasons. And requesting these six variances, I think you did site visit and you can see that it's a somewhat challenging lot uh, where it is. All right. We had some concerns is that, you know, the water table is so high of the flotation of some of the, uh, you know, devices you're installing for part of the system. And you do have an anti-flotation plan. I want you mm -hmm. to note that. The other thing is that the, uh, when you did the soil tests, it was not witnessed by the town, but we had a very long talk of that with code enforcement uh, director, uh, Dave Hatton. Okay. And um, he's comfortable with it. As a matter of fact, he thinks we ought to consider changing the law and allow him to be the, him or somebody in his department to oversee these, um, you know, perp tests and soil tests. And um, the other item that was of concern, I'll share with the public, is that it was in the floodplain. Um, normally that would be a concern, except that Glen Lake, from what we understand, and you can elaborate on this, is, uh, has a dam that controls the water levels of Glen Lake so that a flooding arrangement would not be likely. You want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I, I can elaborate on that. Um, we do have a, a, a dam at the outlet of the lake uh, that the Glen Lake Protective Association owns and oversees. We have a committee, a dam committee that, um, that controls that, um, what we call the board that we raise and lower in the, in the dam. Uh, it allows us some control over the lake. We also, if there's going to be extraordinary rains or waters, we are proactive and go and pull that board before. Uh, so we can control that water. Uh, I also, my doctoral dissertation is on the history of Glen Lake, and I've never found any evidence where uh, the lake has flooded in the 200 plus years of documentation that I can find. Um, and in fact, uh, the water level in the late 1800s, early 1900s was somewhat higher. And due to development and the installation of this new dam, uh, the water level is lower than it was in previous times. So we, we do have control over it and it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, thank you, Paul. Mr. Murdoch, would you explain the system? Because it's not a usual system. It is, a, it is an advanced system. Yes, we uh, are recommending the use of an enhanced treatment unit. Uh, manufactured by Claris Environmental. Essentially, uh, the domestic wastewater is going to flow into this tank, and the tank is going to provide uh, pretreatment to an NSF standard 40 level for residential waste that's uh, mostly clean. And <clears throat> the Pre-treated water was going to be subjected to ultraviolet light to provide disinfection. And then for dispersal, we were going to pump the water into a bottomless sand filter to provide an additional means of physical filtration. And by 
putting the water into the bottomless sand filter, we're able to maintain uh, four feet of vertical separation above the elevation of the lake. So we feel that we've done everything that, um, that we can to mitigate the limited separation between the dispersal location and both the lake and the drinking water supply. Yes, so the Fusion 450, which is well known for its pretreatment capabilities, is going to be used, and then an ultraviolet treatment, yep. and then it goes to a raised sand filter and yep. has at least four feet of cleansing power before it hits the, the, the elevation water. of the lake. Yeah, the elevation. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that that's you know that sand filter system, the bottomless sand filter system, which is 20 feet by seven feet, is proposed to go where that shed is. And I assume the shed is. That's correct. The beautiful shed we're going to yeah. take down. <laughs> I don't think you'll miss it. <laughs> yeah, greatly. Is she going to lose? Matter of fact, that in itself enhances the, <laughs> it does. the area. You're correct. So we'll make note of that. Um, so given the small um, size of your lot, I think you've done fine. Some remaining concerns are uh, adjacent to the house, between the house and the road, mm -hmm. are going to be the caps, the excess caps for the uh, pump station, the ultraviolet light, and the Claris Fusion. How are we going to avoid traffic going on that or snow plows hitting it? How are we going to do that? We're going to put a physical barrier, uh, bollards or, or some other um, means to physically prevent people from driving over it. All right, so some bollards or boulders or something. Yes, for sure. Marking that area yeah. to deter people and snow plows from sweeping in and causing harm to the system. Yes. All right. Any other thoughts, questions, concerns uh, before we open the public hearing on this matter? You covered it, sir. Okay. All right. Any member of the public wish to speak to this application before us tonight? Uh, Paul Derby's application. Anybody out there? Seeing nobody. Any any additional questions from the council? Uh, you want us? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, do you want us to add language about the physical barrier? Yes, would you please? Okay. There is a note on the prints that in indicates that uh, on figure two, there's a, there's a, a detail there. It says we're going to put in a, a four by four or a steel pipe. All right, second so then I think there's probably a detail on figure seven as well. No. I, I don't see any harm with us adding that constraint though. No, and I don't see the detail on figure seven. No, there, there isn't, I suppose. Uh, four by four PT, what's PT stuff for? Pressure treated. Pressure treated? Timber, yeah. Or steel pipe ballot set in concrete, and I guess the town board just wants to highlight that those will be in place. Yeah, we'll certainly do that. All right. So, um, do you have any thoughts, Bob, on additional language for that? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm, I'm writing it out now. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I was just going to make a comment that in the past, um, <coughs> I've had clients that have been required to get flood insurance around Sun Lake um, because it's speeding them out and everything. And you can have somebody come in and do elevation, recertify the elevations, and we've had success a lot of times to prove it's not in flood. So yeah. even though it's marked floodplain, um, they're really not. So. Um, to, to Paul's point. I, I can add to that a little bit because 
I'm pretty sure that <coughs> when the flood plans were done, they were done when the lake was somewhat higher. And I know there's been other instances where they've come back and looked at those and they've recalibrated those yeah. flood. And we've talked about doing that there on Canterbury because yeah, so we're all in the same situation. You have to do it individually and it costs quite a bit of money to do. Yeah. So it's unfortunate that, you know, FEMA wouldn't come back in and reevaluate the whole area. Because well, not only that, but where is it? The end of St. Mary's Bay, the dam? No, the dam's at the outlet. All right. So it's the it's outlet. near T Hills. And and you could lift a board out and mm -hmm. lower it or put a board in and raise it. So Correct. You have controlling mechanism in place. <clears throat> Bob, are you all Okay, I'm just proposing that, that Tom Byrne wants that in, that at the second resolved, that it start resolved and then add language contingent upon there permanently being a physical barrier and then we'll put in parentheses either four by four pressure treated lumber or a steel bollard set in concrete. And then there'll be end print and then we continue. Then you grant the variance. Okay. Is that acceptable to the board? Okay. All right. With that additional condition added in a manner just described by town council, uh, is there a, um, Motion to approve Paul Derby's application for sanitary sewer. Yeah, close the public hearing. Yeah, close yeah. public hearing. I'll introduce. Introduced by That's Councilman Medivere, seconded by uh, Councilperson Freer. Roll call vote on this, please, Rose. Councilperson Perron? Yes. Stroud? Yes. Medivere? Yes. And Freer? Yes. Great. Good luck. Thank you. All right, our third. Uh, resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of William and Kathy Bosey. All right. This is to set a public hearing and only to set a public hearing for February 10th. So this um, sewage disposal variance application um, will have a public hearing on February 10th. And it is for William and Kathy Bosey, 53 assembly point road and they are asking for six variances one the septic tank to be two foot six from the property line instead of the required 10 foot setback the second variant will be a septic tank to be nine foot 11 nine foot 11 inches from the future foundation instead of the required 10 foot setback third variance pump chamber to be two foot six inches from the property line instead of the required 10 foot setback Fourth variance, pump chamber to be nine foot from the future foundation instead of the required 10 foot. Fifth variance, the pump line to be four foot 10 inches from the property line instead of the required 10 foot setback. And the sixth variance is the edge of stone for the pressure bed to be four feet instead of the required 10 foot setback. And again, this public hearing will be February 10th at 7 p.m. And that is for William and Kathy Bosey at 53 Assembly Point Road. Is there a motion to set this public hearing? Uh, introduced by uh, Councilperson Metabier. I'll second. Seconded by Councilperson Frome. Roll call vote, please, Rose. Councilperson Stroud. Yes. Metabier. Yes. Freer. Yes. And Frome. Yes. Okay. This uh, application for William and Kathy Bosey is will have its public hearing at. It's February 10th. <sighs> All right, would you introduce the public to the fourth item in our local Board of Health? Yes, this meeting. is a resolution granting Frank and Aaron Steinbeck an extension of time for septic system replacement at 211 Assembly Point Road and reinstating escrow deposit. All right, Frank and Aaron Steinbeck the applicants previously applied for and received an inspection and exemption for the property located at 211 Assembly Point Road in the town of Queensbury. And following the receipt of the exemption, received local Board of Health approval for certain variances from the provisions of the town's on site uh, disposal ordinance, Chapter 136. Applicant did deliver $2,000 escrow deposit in accord with Chapter 137. So the application dated January 20th, 2020, the applicants have advised that due to winter weather conditions, their contractor has been unable to completely install the replacement wa wastewater system. And the applicants have requested that the town board grant them additional time to complete such installation 
and to extend the date on which the $2,000 escrow deposit shall be automatically forfeited to the town. So this resolution gives them additional time uh, up to May 31st, 2020, if approved. All right. Any thoughts or questions on behalf of the town board? No. None? Uh, how about a motion to approve uh, the granting Frank and Aaron Stein back an extension of time? I'll move it. Moved Second. by uh, uh, Council Person Ferron, seconded uh, by Council Person Freer. Roll call vote on this, please, Rose. Council Person Medivier. Yes. Freer. Yes. Ferron. Yes. Stroud. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, fifth item. It's a resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Jane Nolan Barton and siblings. All right, this is just to set the public hearing and it's setting the public hearing for February 10th for Jane Nolan Barton and all, I say. And the location of this property is 52 Nolan Camp Road and they're asking for two variances one 70 foot from lake in lieu of the required 100 foot setback and 11 foot from the house instead of the required 20 foot foot setback so this is uh um sewage disposal variance application of jane nolan barton and their siblings at 52 nolan camp road and this is to set the public hearing for february 10th is there a motion to I'll do so a motion. motion made by uh council person freer i'll second seconded by council person metamere Roll call vote on this, please, Rose. Councilperson Freer? Yes. Perone? Yes. Stroud? Yes. And Medivere? Yes. There it is. Unanimous, set for February 10th. Okay, the sixth and last item for the Board of Health, uh, please, Rose. This is a resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of John and Tammy Ost. All right. John and Tammy Ost live at or own the residence at 2440 Ridge Road. They're asking for one variance uh, to install a septic tank pump station seven foot from the house in lieu of the required 10 foot setback at 2440 Ridge Road, Town of Queensbury. And this is to set the public hearing on this matter for February 10th. So we're gonna have a lot of public hearings on February 10th, right here at the Town Board Activity Center. All right, motion to set that public hearing. Um, made by moved by uh, councilman council person brown seconded by council person metavere roll call vote on this please council person Perron. yes strau yes metavere yes and freer yeah all right so that sewage disposal variance application of johnny tammy ost is february 10th right here starting 7 p.m those are all the items for the local board of health uh, a motion to move out of the local board of health. John, if I if I could, I would just like to comment that um, the th this is what people think we should be doing, and, and congratulations to you folks who championed this before my time. Uh, and it was nice to uh, see the town of Queensbury get a bravo for uh, this activity uh, in the local press, and uh, I think uh, we need to continue to sort of make sure we take good care of the lakes and uh, uh, doing the right thing. Okay. Any other comments? All right. How about um, that motion? We'll make a motion to leave it. Motion the, made by uh, Council Person Freer. Okay. Seconded by uh, Council Person Frown. All those in favor of uh, uh, getting out of the Queensland Local Board of Pals, say aye. Aye. All right, we're out. All right, next we have two public hearings. Want to announce to the public the first public hearing, please, Rose? Sure, this is a public hearing on fire protection services agreement between the town of Queensbury and West Glens Falls Volunteer Fire Company, Inc. for 2020 through 2022. All right. Um, this uh, is a hearing for a, a three-year uh, contract with the fire uh, company, of West Glens Volunteer Fire Company for the years 2020, 21, 22. And they are a 2% increase, 2% of the aggregate. So for a total of uh, 2020, $664,120. 2021, 2%. 2022, 
$677,402, and 2022, 2%, $690,950,000 for fire services being provided. There is a public hearing on this tonight. Is there any member of the public wish to speak to the proposed contract we're looking at entering with West Montsville Volunteer Fire Company? All right. Seeing none, any thoughts on behalf of the town board? Doug, can you just explain to people a little bit about the fact that this budget includes uh, sustainment of their equipment as well? Yes, good point. This, this budget, as it has been in the past, and I wanna thank, we have five fire companies and three MS squads. We have worked out budget arrangements with them so that they're buying purchases of major pieces of equipment major apparatus is all planned for within this budget it used to be in the old days we would trim the budgets down to everything possible and then any large purchases they would have to come to the board and request those large purchases and additional monies and so forth we thought and this was a, a collaborative effort between the fire departments and the ems squads and the town that we would put together budgets that forces everybody to plan, plan for their building improvements, plan for their equipment replacement program, plan for their vehicle replacement program, plan it, include it in the budget, so that when they come to us and they have, need approval for a vehicle or a large equipment purchase, that um, that is already in the budget. We don't have that issue. You know, we may have to give them approval so they get the uh, no interest, where the bank receives the no, no, no interest, and, and we give that approval for that. That's fine, but it won't be money matters. They're gonna include everything in the budget, and I wanna thank the fire departments and the EMS squads for cooperating. This has worked very well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? I just wanna also say, since it's here, and we've been going to uh, the annual meetings. At the annual banquets for five fire companies and three MS squads, and that's tough on the diet, <laughs> <laughs> but it still is a good time because we get to meet the guys who are volunteering their time. And I don't think the public realizes how much time it is with the training, the the maintenance of the building maintenance of the equipment um not to mention answering you know hundreds if not thousands of ems and fire calls and it's not just ems and fire they are emergency responders i mean people ask them to help pump out their basements when we have a car accident they're there helping to direct flow and they do a very good job at that and that requires in itself and dave duel our highway superintendent will vouch for this that requires a lot of training to do it right but they have to do everything right they they're there to protect us they can't afford to do things wrong they take their training very seriously and the training includes many many hours so between the building and the equipment, responding to our emergency needs, each one of these volunteers is putting in hundreds of hours. And it's one of the reasons why we have such cost-effective fire protection in the town of Queens area is because of these volunteers. So again, I appreciate the banquets and the banquets are good reminders that we need to show our appreciation to these volunteers. And at these banquets, recognition is given to the volunteers on the amount of time that they have in. Many of them have 10, 20, 30, 40, even 60 years of service to this town as a volunteer. That is something that deserves huge recognition I can't possibly do enough from this podium at this time other than to say the kind words that I think need to be said. Thank you very much for everything you do. 
All right. I could go on. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, there's a public hearing on this. Nobody spoke to it. I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. All right. I'll motion made by Councilman uh, Person Menabier, seconded by Councilperson Freer. A roll call vote on the resolution authorizing fire protection services agreement between the town of Queensbury and West Westfold Volunteer Fire Company for 2020 to 2022. Council person met of you. Yes. Freer? Yes. Barone? Yes. And Stroud? Yes. Thank you guys. Uh, our second public hearing tonight, please, Rose, would you introduce that to the public? Yes, this is a public hearing um, to extend a temporary moratorium on install installation of ground-mounted solar energy systems. All right, this is just to expend a moratorium that we're currently under for another two months. We are continuing to work on the ground-mounted solar energy systems law and we need more time. So this is extending an additional two months to April 5th, 2020. And there's a public hearing on this tonight. And the county's already given their approval and so forth. No member of the public wish to speak to this tonight. I'll close the public hearing and um, any thoughts or comments from the board? Just uh, at my training in Albany, two other towns in rural New York are struggling with the same um, issue. So uh, uh, I think us staying on top of it and getting out in front of it is the right thing to do. Um, but it's it's not unique to us. And I, I wasn't around when you all um, decided, but I think it was the smart choice to not get wrapped up with uh, trying to do wind at the same time. But that'll, that'll be something that we have to keep an eye on uh, best practices for. And yeah, get, I don't think we have too much to worry about when there's been zero interest in wind. And I don't think we have enough wind to keep us. Well, that speed. technology's improving, so we'll see. But uh, I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Um, I'll make a motion. All right. Motion made for approval uh, by Councilman Freer, seconded uh, by Councilman Farrell. Uh, roll call vote on this, please. Councilperson Freer. Yes. Farrell. Yes. Stroud? Yes. And Medivere. All right. So the moratorium has been extended to April 5th. All right. Next in the meeting, I have seven resolutions. I will go through those resolutions and give the um, public uh, an opportunity to comment, share their thoughts with any of the seven resolutions before us tonight. Um, that will follow my description of the seven resolutions. Resolution 4.1, Rose. Resolution authorizing award of bid for purchase purchase of used track mounted screen plant for highway department. Okay, highway department uh, needs a um, um, a track mounted screening plant. We have one, but it's very old, very ancient, very dilapidated. It served its purpose for a couple of decades and, uh, but it is dilapidated, trust me. Um, um, and we make our own sand. So our highway department has a practice of mixing salt and sand. And um, that's the way we keep our roads safe for the public. And the highway department does a great job doing that. Thank you, Dave Duell. Yeah. And um, uh, so they, said, well, we don't need new. Why don't we look and see what's used out there? So we did find a used one, and it's for 139000 It is a 2015 Kleeman MS-16Z track-mounted screening plant. And, uh, and this is a resolution to approve its purchase for, like I said, $139,000. All right, resolution 4.2. Resolution authorizing advertisement of bids for construction of Pathway Brook Trail. All right. Well, the Halfway Brook Trail, we are very close on agreeing with the city of Glens Falls, and they have their representatives, and we have ours, uh, to developing a lower watershed recreation management plan, which is part of this whole process. As you know, about five years ago, 
Mayor Diamond and I agreed that we would work cooperatively to uh, develop a halfway book trail. And uh, through paperwork and negotiations, it took some time uh, to work all that out. We're at the point where we're very close to agreeing on the lower watershed recreation management plan. And part of that plan includes the design of the trail, but because of timing, and I did share this with the members of the Clinch Falls contingency of the uh, lower watershed recreation management plan committee. And so they are aware of this and they're aware that we're looking at approving this tonight. And um, again, it's essentially the same design as the Rush Pond Trail, which is you need a clearing area of 14 feet by 12 foot in height. 14 foot because the multimodal trail itself area, 10 feet, and that's a minimum, needs to be dedicated to that. And then you have two foot on either side for, um, you know, aprons, uh, stormwater spillage, and so forth. So that it needs to be 14 foot in width, 12 foot in height for clearing, um, just for public safety reasons, on a person on a bicycle and so forth. And it is a minimum of uh, four inches of item four. And item four uh, might be donated by a local developer, but I'm, I'm, I gotta get final confirmation on that. Uh, Betty Little did set aside a grant for us. And uh, it's the Dormitory Authority Grant, or DASNY. And uh, for $100,000, we will uh, be able to use that in construction of this trail. And construction of the trail, it's about 1.2 miles from Aviation Road to Peggy Ann Road. And it's part of a comprehensive system. This trail will be connected to the next trail system. The next trail system I'm calling the halfway to feeder connector, but actually it could be called the halfway feeder Coleswoods, Randall Park connection because it's doing all that. But that's a separate trail and that's a separate matter. But again, it's part of a whole comprehensive plan. Well, anyhow, if approved by the town board tonight, it means that we can go out to bid and we'll see what the bids are. And then this board still has to approve the bid once it comes in, uh, if there is a bid that we like. So this is just allowing us to go out to bid on the matter. And I have available, I've attached to this and I've shared it with the town board, um, the uh, request for bids and the design of the trail and uh, notice to bidders of what's required of them and so forth. And, um, you know, I used a lot of the same elements that I used when I went out to bid for the Rust Pond Trail and developing this bid. Okay, any thoughts or questions on behalf of the town board? Do we have any floating bridges in this design? Yeah, well, no, this is just for the road construction, but I will expect town board members to be helping me build that bridge. <laughs> it's good exercise. <clears throat> just right. do it in the summer, not in the winter. <laughs> right, and that was said by others, by the way. All right, so that's that one, 4.3. Resolution authorizing closure of Microsoft Azure Capital Project Fund number 217. All right, so uh, we're probably way ahead of uh, many of the other, what is there, 935 towns in New York State? I think uh, we're probably up in the top 10, if not higher, in our IT development. One of the things that we did, we moved everything to a very, very protected cloud service. All right, that's all said and done. We have $2,622.76 remaining, and this is to close that fund and to put it into capital reserve fund number 64. 4.4. Resolution and final order approving Route 9 Sanitary Sewer District extension number three. Okay, we've announced this before. There is a map plan and report and it was developed by Lansing Engineering, a licensed engineer in New York, regarding the proposed sewer district extension to permanently serve an existing apartment development known as Robert Gardens North, located at 220 Weeks Road. 
and this is to get them into that uh, municipal sewer system. It'll be sewer district extension number three. Four point five. Resolution authorizing agreement between the Town of Queensbury and Lake George Park Commission in connection with boat launch inspection and boat and boat wash system. All right, this is an annual amount that we give to the Lake George Park Commission. Um, and it's our contribution to the boat launch inspection and boat wash system that they've been doing now annually for years and years. And it's a darn good thing. I did send out the report to you. They captured numerous boats infected with invasive species. I think 163 or 168. Something like that. But also there were ones that were questionable that also got one. Now this is a free service we offer to the boaters and they seem to be very cooperative with it. And uh, with the idea that we don't want to introduce any more invasive species into our lakes, especially Lake George, but into any of the lakes. So we began this program, oh, five or six years ago. Many other lakes are copying this the Adirond region is copying this. As a matter of fact, when New York State put the new visitor center up near exit 17, they included a boat washing station. So again, this area is leading the way, you know, and I got to thank the Fund for Lake George, the Lake George Association, and the Lake George Park Commissioner, especially Dave Wick, for making all this work. But all the towns have contributed to this, and that's the village of Lake George, the town of Lake George, the town of Queensbury, the town of Bolton, uh, the town of Hague, uh, have all contributed to make this happen. Uh, 4.6. Resolution authorizing advertisement of bids for sale of obsolete equipment. All right, if this gets approved, it goes to an auction company, Gov Deals, to dispose of and they are a 1990 Bobcat 743 skid steer, a 2009 Backtrack Debris Vacuum, 2008 Toro 1200 Athletic Field Painter, a Hobart 140 MIG Welder. And the last and the seventh resolution for this evening. Resolution approving out of bills, warrant of January 28, 2020. All right, before the bills can be paid, this board has to approve their payment and this has a warrant with a run date of January 23rd, 2020, and payment date of January 28th, 2020, totaling $465,778.97. All right, those are the seven resolutions before the town board tonight, and I will open uh, for public comment and thoughts uh, right now. Anybody would like to speak to any of those seven resolutions before this town board tonight? All right, seeing none. Uh, town board thoughts on any of the seven resolutions or uh, roll call request for any of the seven resolutions before us tonight? No. Nope. All right, then we'll take them in group. 4.1 through 4.7. Is there a resolution to approve? 4.1 through 4.7. So no. <clears throat> Moved by Councilperson Prone. Second. Seconded by Councilperson Metterbeer. Roll call vote on those seven resolutions, please, Ralph. Councilperson Perone? Yes. Stroud? Yes. Medivere? Yes. And Freer? Yes. Passes unanimously. Any correspondence? No correspondence. No correspondence. Privilege of the floor. This is the opportunity where we give anybody the opportunity to speak to any town issue that you would like at this point in time. Is there any member of the public out there that wishes to speak to them? No. Okay. Well, then we go to town board discussions. Uh, let's start with George. I do not have anything to say. Okay. Harrison? Yeah, so I mentioned uh, before that I attended the uh, newly elected training uh, for two and a half days down in Albany. Yeah. Um, one of the things, one of the takeaways uh, was this whole notion of where we're going with ground solar. Uh, I'm interested to see how we move forward. I think it's the right answer for us to look at uh, where we can put um, solar farms, if you will, but there'll be some unintended consequences that we'll have to keep our eye on that ball in terms of w what other people are doing and uh, what the industry is doing. But uh, it was one of the topics that came up. Um, <clears throat> the other uh, thing that uh, I'll mention is that um, I'm continuing to spin up and uh, did my 
PII training today and uh, I think the, the cyber security training that the town has um, got on board is excellent and hopefully I'll did you get your certificate? I have my certificate that I'll All right. pass on. But uh, that's it for me. Um, I'll be out of town for a week, but uh, I'll be contact. I'll be available for emails and calls if anybody wants to. All get right, over. and we will. I do have the agenda pretty well set, and I'll release it Wednesday uh, for the uh, town board workshop, which will be next Monday, uh, February third. And um, and one of the items we're going to be talking about is uh, our ground mounted solar. No. Okay. So, and, and we're probably going to have more discussions on it, but at least we're going to have some discussion on it Monday night, along with some other things. Uh, Tony? So, this is out there, Dave. Tell you guys things. You're doing a great job. We're halfway there. <laughs> so, uh, they've, they've been on their A game this year. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, that leaves me. And, um, I have my supervisory report to community and board. Let me see. I will um, points of interest. I'm not going to go through it all, like the board has requested me not to go through it all. Uh, but I do want to say that we had our first Bloom Festival committee meeting Tuesday, January 14th. Yes, it takes that long to organize a Bloom Festival, and I hope the public appreciates it. Um, we had a, on Wednesday, January 15th, we had a meeting with our department managers to look at updating our website. And with their input, which I think was very valuable, uh, we're going to be looking at updating our website soon, making it even better. Um, on Thursday, January 16th, I had a discussion or talk with the Glenswell seniors. And uh, that went on for about an hour and a half. It was a very lively uh, discussion. I think we all enjoyed it. Um, on Saturday, January 18th, I had uh, joined the Women's March and I also joined uh, uh, the last, that night, Queensbury Central Fire, Volunteer Fire Company's annual budget. On Sunday, um, I gave a speech and participated in the march of the Martin Luther King celebration. And the ceremony following it was absolutely wonderful. I want to thank the local NAACP for organizing that. Um, And then this last Saturday, we have the Bay Ridge Volunteer Fire Company annual budget. Banquet. 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 Right. <laughs> we got budget on the head, don't I? <laughs> you said it twice now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then today, I, I drew up a draft RFQ for uh, Glen Lake's integrated, comprehensive uh, water quality and habitat management plan. So uh, Stu Baker's adding some uh, professional touches to it, and then I will share it with the board before I send it out. It'll make sure it's okay with you. Um, and then we have the town board meeting time. So that's it for me tonight. All right, anything else for the good of the order? Nothing. All right, thank you, Joe Barlow, for coming, and uh, George Stack and Dave Duell, thank you for being the public tonight. <laughs> Except for the firemen, they were here earlier. Thank town council. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, board members. Uh, if there's nothing else for the good of the order, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by uh, Councilperson Brown. Second. Seconded by Councilperson Freer. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. It's unanimous. We're now adjourned. The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan are one of New York's largest independently owned insurance agencies. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, 
technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Store tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pinnell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pinnell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pinnell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Be firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion.